Okay, so after this uh, story, do you have any questions or you have any feeling, any thinking, any takeaway? Master, was Alexander the same king that we heard about one time? I think Master mentioned a story about a king who went to find the um, the lake in India and there is the pool of eternal youth. Yes. And he tried to find that lake. Yes. Is it the same king? Was that Alexander? I guess it's the same. Yes. Who else would uh, conquer India? <laughs> Was he as spiritual practitioner or he had some kind of uh, information about such places like the Garden of Eden and maybe afterward maybe after he conquered India he might have met some masters yes and opened his wisdom eye and this story may be one of the uh, stories that he met the master in other books I read about him he has made some uh, high practitioners high yogis or masters and then Uh, he, that master or yogi had predicted his death. Yes. Saying that whenever you see the sky turn into silver, you will die. Yes. So he died under the canopy, which was made of silver. Yeah, that covered him when he was sick, when he was unwell. And that's what the yogi had told him. You see, there are many things. Uh, the master or the prophecy has told us, but this mostly is in like a like a metaphorical kind of a story, yeah, yes. 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 or like a parable. So if you don't have the wisdom eyes open, you would uh, not be able to suspect or to interpret what it is, yeah. Mm. Yes. When Alexander heard that, he probably would think, oh, then he would never die. Because the, sil the sky cannot be silver, can never turn into silver. The sky has no substance, no essence of any solid uh, uh, elements. That's what he probably must be thinking, right? Yes. <laughs> maybe it is written in the history or maybe not, I don't remember. But I guess he must have felt invincible. Mm. Yes. You never know if you don't know how to interpret the sages' uh, teachings or premonitions, you you would be living in ignorance and then disaster may befall you any time, you would never know. Sometimes I read stories, I feel uh, very interesting. So I wanted you also to know, because it has a lot of philosophy in it, no? Yes, Master. Yes, and we could learn a lot and we could take away a lot. To learn, to be more humble, and more uh, attentive to what is a uh, uh, priority in our lives. Yes. It reminds me also the ephemeral nature of this world. And then we may be awakened through the story to go to find some solution, some spiritual solution to, to our life. Yeah. Not just being busy all day, all night, working, sweating, just to put food in the mouth and to put cloth back. Even uh, Abraham, he was pondering all by himself, remember? Yes. yes. Even though he did not have any master, he was already thinking, it's better to think of something more spiritual, I mean, higher than our life, not just, you know, working, working, earning a living and putting food in the mouth and digesting it and putting clothes on or vying with each other for possessions and uh, prestige and whatnot, for position or political powers. This is not our priority. And because you can see it, huh? What's the use of Alexander conquering so many great countries and die just under a, a canopy, a silver color umbrella. Yes. Any more love? Any other questions? Uh, I have one more follow-up. Is the story about the Garden of Eden uh, uh, last time. I was wondering, in uh, some versions of the story, the, the tree that um, Adam took the apple from was called the Tree of Knowledge. And yes. I was wondering why it was forbidden, or what is the connection with knowledge that was forbidden by God and, and Is this still have some meaning today about is it against God's will for people to seek 
too much into knowledge, or at least how was it bad for Adam to, or what was wrong with the accessing knowledge from the tree of knowledge? Mm. Good question. Very smart question. Yes. Uh, the translation may be wrong, okay? Or maybe slightly different from what God's intention. If it is correct, it should be in some other other uh, book, they will say uh, that the tree that bears the fruit and if you eat it, you will know the wrong and the right. Yeah. Or you know the good and the bad. Yes. Right. Now, I suspect that this is the... It's not about the tree of knowledge. <laughs> it's just something that is forbidden in the kingdom of heaven. Just like I told you the story last time when when we were beginning to um, explore this uh, early planet and uh, we ate this and that and th then we became more solidified, mm -hmm. yes. more heavy and we could not fly, we could not be free, we could not think so nobly like before or we cannot be as wise as before. This is not just about the food. Then later on, because of eating so much different food, it changed the chemicals of our celestial makeup and made us become more like a solid being like we are right now. The humans then began to have more uh, different desires, physical desires for each other and all that which did not occur before before the, the testing of all the food on earth in front of them and wherever they found it. And then because of that, we gone into different kind of dimension of uh, uh, behaviors, of desires. And then it's different. We changed the chemicals in our body changed and we desire uh, intimate body connection with others. We had to build houses or go into caves to hide, to do all these kind of activities with the opposite. Because uh, after eating so many things, our chemistry, our chemical uh, makeup changed, our celestial components changed into something more uh, uh, material, a lower level than before. It depends on what they ate and how much they ate. They became either men or women or in between. Yeah, we call them trans nowadays. Trans or a gay or lesbian, right? Yes. It depends on how much they ate at that time and what kind of things they ate. Then they changed. And then the one who had become woman is more defined in the bodily uh, contour. That's what you say, correct? Yes. Shapes. Yes. And the the man, the one who turned masculine, became more robust, strong, and with a different kind of mentality. The man at that time saw the beautiful woman, then began to desire them. And thus, they had a couple's relationship, and so and so and so, and until today. So the tree in the garden, it could mean not just the knowledge, okay? Yes. But by the way, the knowledge of wrong and right, of good and bad, what's the use of knowing that? Yes. Yeah. In heaven, there are no words. I mean, in higher heaven, there are no words in the dictionary that say bad or good. Like in the Tim Kutu's land, they don't even know that word, good or bad. Everything is just is. Okay, as is, and fine, noble, and wonderful. That makes you just <laughs> feel no desire for anything, just happy, blissful all the time. And meanwhile, you have your creativities and all kind of activities that you wanted to do. So you don't lose anything, not knowing the bad or the good. Yeah. 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 After eating the apple, Knowing the bad and the good. You see what good it is? Hmm? Yes. Yes. And then, then Adam began to have this physical 
desire and relationship with the Eva. From then on, they go on to do more things that are not heaven-like quality until God has to expel them. Yes. The knowledge of good and bad in this world, we know. But what does it help us? Even if we try to avoid the bad quality of actions and we try to do all the time the good, it will not take us anywhere. It just takes us to another reincarnation and experience another temptation or a bad uh, obstruction again. Unless you meet an enlightened master and become enlightened yourself, erase all the past karma for you. You never go anywhere doing bad or doing good. Doing bad, you go to hell. Doing good, you reincarnate. Maybe as human or maybe in heaven and then come back again. Even as the king of heaven, you will also one day come back as animals even. It depends on your merit, uh, your karma. Mm -hmm. And so the knowledge of good and bad, even if it was true that if you eat the apple in the Eden garden and you, you are aware of the knowledge of good and bad, of wrong and right, does that knowledge serve you anything? No. Does it make your life better than in Eden? No. no. Nothing. Just, uh, just pushes you into the river of life and death and reincarnation and suffering and sorrow and some moments of happiness, but the rest are just suffering, painful. More painful than happiness in this life. That's why God doesn't want him to eat it. Mm, yes. Do you see it now? Yes, yes, yes master. master. I mean, would you prefer to eat that? No. 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 <laughs> so now you try to vomit it out for me, and then we go back to heaven, Sawa? <laughs> <laughs> Spit it out, yeah? Okay?